the woman is more glorious than the man. In the Garden of Eden, why did the serpent come to Eve first, rather than to Adam? Was she the easier target? Was she inherently, morally, emotionally, mentally weaker than Adam? Not at all. The serpent attacked her first because it was afraid of her. It was the most astute of God's creatures. It sensed that she had the capacity to defeat it, and not only to defeat it, but to do so with unparalleled glory. The serpent, as part of God's creation, could do nothing without God's permission. So why did God allow it to attack? God had commissioned Adam and Eve to subdue the earth, in other words, to govern it, including governing the wayward, rebellious serpent. And this was their first opportunity. Why did God allow the serpent to attack Eve first, rather than Adam? There is a reason, because everything that God does is for a reason. God wanted her, the woman, to have the honour and the glory of defeating evil. The woman, Eve, was entirely capable of defeating the serpent, and she very effectively fought off his first line of attack. She stood strong in what God had said, and the serpent had to find another approach. This time, though, the woman set God's words aside. And in so doing, she stepped out from under God's protective covering of truth and of love. She allowed her senses to govern her rather than God. While she was submitted to God, she was mighty, she was glorious. She was morally, emotionally, mentally powerful. Only in leaving the sphere of God's love did she lose that power and that glory. But God foresaw it all. He already planned to take the worst that sin and Satan can do, restore what's been lost and bring out of it something better. He always does. In the book of Judges, the military commander Barak only agrees to obey God and go to war on condition that the prophetess Deborah goes with him. She informs him that she will go, but that the glory will therefore go to a woman rather than to him. Sure enough, the hero of the story is Yael, wife of Heber. Barak's attitude was sinful, but God foresaw it and used it as an opportunity to glorify the woman. What was lost in Eden was being regained. The church is the bride of Christ. In the book of Revelation, when Jesus speaks to seven churches, he gives each one a personal message about the rewards waiting those who overcome evil. As the bride of Christ, the church defeats the devil. What was lost in Eden is regained fully. Of course, in the book of Judges, it's God who gave victory to Yael. But Yael put that victory into effect. It was seen through her. It's Jesus who defeated the devil through his life, his death on the cross and his resurrection. But it's the bride of Christ those willing to overcome, who put that glorious victory into effect. It is seen through us. Christ is seen in us. The woman is the glory of the man. The man's glory is magnified in her. God's plan has always been for the woman to be more glorious than the man. Why else would it be that at a wedding all eyes are on the bride, not the bridegroom? because she's more glorious. But why is she even there at her wedding? Because of her bridegroom, because of the man. The woman is the glory of the man. He is magnified in her. Marriage is in every way a symbol and representation of Jesus Christ and the church. When Jesus returns and takes the church as his bride, the whole of creation will marvel at her glory. But why is the church even there? We exist for Jesus Christ. The church is the glory of Jesus Christ. He is magnified in her. This is why all eyes will be on her. She's glorified in and of herself because of the glory of Jesus in her. A glory which is as colourful 
as rich and as dazzlingly varied as there are people who make up his inheritance. God made humanity in his own image, male and female, to be his image bearers. Each and every aspect of our life, body and soul, is designed to show something specific about God, to show something of his great glory. God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, so let's look at the parallels. The Son, Jesus Christ, came to earth because of the Father. The Son shone forth the glory of the Father. The Son's might, mission and message came from the Father. The Son poured all of his life out in loving submission and service to the Father. And so the Father, through the Son, defeated the serpent. The Father, through the Son, achieved eternal salvation for creation. In this, the Son was glorified in the Father, and the Father was glorified in the Son. Likewise, the woman, the wife, exists for the man, for the husband. The woman shines forth the glory of the man. The woman's might, mission and message come via the man. As the woman pours out her life in loving submission and service to the man, she defeats the serpent, she acts as a redeemer, and she helps put salvation into effect for creation. In this, she is glorified in the man, and the man is glorified in her. The Son received the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why? To the glory of God the Father. Similarly, the woman receives great honour, and her goal is to glorify the man. At the end of the age, when the Son has put all his enemies under his feet, the Son will deliver the kingdom back to the Father so that God, Father, Son and Spirit, may be all in all. And similarly, the woman daily defeats the serpent. She daily builds her kingdom, but she builds it for the man, so that together, male and female, husband and wife, they can bear the image of God. The serpent in Eden persuaded Eve to reach out and take the fruit of the forbidden tree. Why not eat that fruit? Seize the power. Get your godlikeness quickly by listening to a more intelligent voice. Why remain hidden, living under the covering of God and of your husband? The same serpent tried to persuade Jesus, the Son of God, to reach out and grasp the fruit of the same tree. Why not turn those stones to bread? Why not push yourself into the public eye? Why not grasp your kingship quickly by bowing to me, the prince of this world? Jesus refused. He remained hidden in the covering of God's love. And from that place, he struck forth with power and with might. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. A woman's long hair is her glory. God gives it to her as a covering, like a mantle thrown around her, it expresses her, hidden, her hiddenness, her submission, her power and her glory. It's this power which puts into effect the defeat of the serpent. It's this glory that leaves creation gasping in wonder and awe at the woman's beauty. The woman first exchanged her glory for a counterfeit. But the counterfeit is tired, old and barren. For those who are not yet listening, the quest goes on to recover the glory. Struggling to regain the beauty which we sense once upon a time was ours. Indeed, which we sense is our inheritance. But God, in Jesus Christ, has given it back to us. For those who listen, everything is restored. Not only to the former glory of the woman, a glory which was untested and untried in the field of battle, but to a glory that's proven, established, secure and unlimited, because it's the glory of God himself, secured in Jesus Christ, 
and made available by the Holy Spirit, who is given to us without measure. The woman is the glory of the man. The church is the glory of Jesus Christ. Let's live like it.